help me to read these. Okay. So we can start. Okay, who wants to start? You want to just go straight? Yes, go okay. straight with the since the beginning. Okay. Sarah and a star can both be translated as to be. Did you start the thing? Yes. Okay. Here is the English verb fully conjugated, to be. I am, you are, he or she is, we are, you all are, they are. Notice that these two sentences can have different meanings in English. The apple is green, meaning the apple is not ripe, or the apple is green, meaning the color of the apple is green. In the first case, our example speaks of the condition of the apple. The apple is green because it has not yet ripened. When the condition of the apple changes, that is, when it has ripened, it will no longer be green. It will be ripe. In the second case, our example speaks of the essential characteristics of the apple. The apple is green in color. This particular apple remains green even after it has ripened. In English, the verb to be can be used to tell how something is, the condition, and what something is, the essence. How is the apple? It is unripe. What color is the apple? It is green. In Spanish, a different verb is used to express to be depending on whether the speaker intends to address a condition or an essential quality. La manzana está verde, the apple is green condition, la manzana es verde, the apple is green, essence. Note how the adjective verde actually changes meaning depending upon whether it is used with ser or esta. La manzana esta verde, condition, verde equals unripe. La manzana es verde, essential characteristic, verde equals the color green. Okay, just stop there. What is it? since the beginning what it said in english you guys have to be this is set or start looks like it's the same verb in english is to be looks like it's the same verb but in spanish is not we use sir for in, in one particular occasion so we use the start in other particular occasions, okay? The big sample in this is la manzana está verde. That is the, the example that is the handout to us. This is the, the apple is green, right? In English is the apple is green in both. La manzana está verde, la manzana es verde. In English is the same, the apple is green. Either way, in Spanish, it's not. If you say la manzana está verde, means the condition, la condición. That means that the apple is not ready yet to eat. And you use estar. We're going to check, we're going to see when you use star and when you use ser. Okay? But la manzana es verde means that the color of the apple is green and it's never going to change. It's always green. This apple can be red, but it's not right. But it's, it está verde because it's not ready yet to eat. Even though that the color of that apple is completely red and you see and you look at the apple and say oh, it's wonderful it looks yummy but it's not because it's not ready yet it's está verde that doesn't mean the color means the condition of the apple there is when we use the star mm -hmm. and in this particular case es verde means that the color physical color of the apple is green you're watching a green apple so, that is the difference so the the key for me was understanding if you're talking about something that's going to change your sex doesn't change so you are a woman but um or you are a man but something else about you might change 
and so you would use a different verb. And so, and she's trying to say if it is stabber, then it's going to change. It's going to become red. Right. But if it's a green apple, that's what it is. So is a star only used pertaining to the condition of something? Is it no. say every other time? No. no. Okay. We are gonna we're gonna check. That would be inconvenient. Okay. I could learn that. <laughs> no, no, no. We're gonna check. You know, we're gonna keep continue with the handout because in there we're gonna find out when we're gonna use the star mm -hmm. and when we're gonna use S. Okay? But for example, like 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 John said, means that this is gonna change. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And this is not. This is an example. Cindy. Es una mujer. Cindy es una mujer. Never going to change. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be a woman. Mm -hmm. Cindy está... In the supermercado. Right now, she is in the supermarket, but maybe 30 minutes after, she's going to be at home. See how change? Mm -hmm. That is a key thing that you need to figure it out right now. I'm giving you, you know, when are you using S and when are you using star. Okay? Questions? Sara. I'm <laughs> watching your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no questions. We can keep con uh, reading. Okay, Cindy. Uh, to, uh, to, to address condition, to address condition, use a star. A star is an irregular verb. It does not follow the standard rules of conjugation for regular AR verbs. Therefore, you must memorize it. A star. Uh, yo estoy. Uh huh. Tu estás. Mm -hmm. El, ella está. Yo, tu, él. Nosotros estamos. And is the next one vosotros? Yeah. Vosotros yes. estáis. Ustedes están. Vosotros and ustedes. Oh, and ustedes. Okay. Ustedes estáis. Vosotros and ustedes is, is always going to be the same. This okay. one is the formal. And this is informal. Okay. So that would be... Like tú. Ellos. O and usted. This is formal. And this is informal. Right? Okay. okay. How okay. did you say that? The one for vosotros? Vosotros estáis. Uh -huh. Estáis, or ustedes estáis, okay? This is the right, you know, we don't, we, sometimes, well, yeah, sometimes we don't use the pronoun. Just leave it like, go directly to the verb, okay? Right. right. Say it. To address an essential quality, use ser. Ser is also irregular and must be memorized. Yo soy... Tú eres, él, ella es, uh -huh. nosotros somos, vosotros y ustedes sois, uh -huh. uh, ellos son. Sí, Cindy es. In here is es. So you have to memorize how you can, how, which one do you have to use because it changed. It depends on the pronoun. Okay. okay. Next, page three. If you are talking about what something is, use ser. If you are talking about how something is, use a star. What is she like? She is quiet. Use ser. Ella es callada. 
How is she acting? She is being quiet. Use a star. Ella está callada. See? It's the same like this. This it. It's ending here. When you are talking about how she is, she's quiet. She's never going to change. She's always going to be like that. That's why you use ella es callada. But if she is acting like that, but she's not like that, ella está callada. See? Did you see the difference? Mm -hmm. And you think you will never do that automatically, but after you've thought about it enough times, your brain automatically does it. I don't know how to tell you that, but I used to have to stop and think, is this conditional or not? But now it just comes out of your head. You start thinking in that parameter. Hard for me to believe, John. It's true. <laughs> Wake it, wake it, wakes up a piece of your brain you didn't know you had. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It looks like it's the same sentence, but it's not. It's telling two different things. When you say, ella está callada, it means that right now she's quiet. But that doesn't mean that she's always quiet. That is not part of her character. Something happened to her. I, 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 need to, I need to see what happened to her because she's, she's quiet. Está callada. But if I said ella es callada, I'm telling that she's always like that. That's part of her personality. It's never going to change. She's like that. Mm -hmm. you know, don't, 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 if nothing happened to her, she's like that. Mm -hmm. See the difference? Mm -hmm. In English, you, you know... You say it and it's the same, but in Spanish it's not. This is condition, this is esencia. It's part of her. See? Question. That is a really good example. Okay. We have this. Okay, we're going to enter right now in the most important part. Getting that, keep going. When we, can, can you read Sara? Mm -hmm. When to use sir? Sir is used to express the hour, day, and date. Que hora es? What time is it? Son las dos? It's two o'clock. Que día es hoy? What day is today? Hoy es lunes, today is Monday. Que fecha es hoy? What's the date today? Es el cinco de mayo. So if you want to express day, hour, day, you always going to use sir. Always. For day, day, an hour, you always gonna use say it. Okay? But you need to make sure that you remember the, the, the pronouns and the conjugations. You need to use the right pronoun with the right conjugation. Like, que hora es? Mm -hmm. Okay? Questions? Sorry. So, how do you know when to use es and son? It depends. Come, come back to the pronouns. Let me write it here. I'm going to write it here.
vosotros, ustedes. seeing right now when to use sir so that means this this is sir and this is a star and the first thing is telling you when that when you when you uh, have date hour and date you're gonna use it you, you, you're gonna use sir okay que hora es Remember that I told you. 
told you, when you have the in front of E-L, you make it L. Okay. It's a contraction. Okay. So in the example on the handout, it said soy de Colombia. So you don't necessarily need the L? Yeah, you don't need, you sometimes don't need you it. need it. Like in this case, for, to address Ecuador, I have to put L. So that's more of a, that's a problem I have very badly, but we're not going to address that here, when to use that it, because we don't use it in English. No. So my question is, is that not for, is that from a later class or? Issue? Which one, de? Using the it, like that exactly, yo soy de el Ecuador, I, I haven't figured that out yet. Sometimes I leave the L out because I don't know when to put it. Well, in here, you can put in here, yo soy de el Ecuador. Right, and I don't know why the L belongs there. He would say, yo soy de Ecuador, and not have the L, is what he's saying. Right, and I'm because trying to figure, is that, is that a lesson we should be talking about later? I can say it like that, yo soy de Ecuador. Either way, it's not this, it's the same. But I know there's a lot of times the L goes in there, and my wife corrects me when, she, when I'm typing. She says, oh, you forgot the... And I don't know, I don't understand why yet. Because sometimes some countries you need to put the L. But I'm not like talking about just the country. I'm talking about yeah. in general when in you're general, writing. Sometimes you, you need to make sure when it, it's a noun. When the noun is there, the noun, like in this case it's a country, you need to make sure that when it, it needs the L, the article or not. And it's something that we see before here, but it was so basic. And probably in the next level, we're going to okay. check that thing because okay. it's important when to use it and when not to use it. Okay. So but for an advanced yes. class. But in this case, you have to. And it's always before a noun. The el, la, los, las is in the, the sentence. But in this case, like Colombia, Colombia doesn't need it. Yo soy de Colombia. De el Colombia? It doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because, like you said, sometimes we have to in order to make sounds right. And it's a rule in there why we put it or not. But it's in the advanced class. It's not, because not always have to be there. Because this Colombia is a noun too, but it doesn't need it. Okay? But in, in, in this case, for example, the Ecuador, you can put it. Um, yo soy, no, it doesn't sound good. Del Ecuador. De el Ecuador. It, you have to put it in there. Um, because we would use we would use the when talking about something that was plural. I'm going to well, yeah, the Caribbean because the Caribbean has multiple islands, but we wouldn't say I'm going to the Guatemala. Yeah, so it's it's different. It it is because, and I think that is probably the equator. Because the equator is the line, and that's why you have to put it in there. Because I was thinking all the countries, and you never use el, la, los, las to put it, the article to, to address the country. Like, for example, yo soy de Panamá. You don't say de, de la Panamá. Yo soy de Mexico. Yo soy de Argentina. Yo soy de Brasil. Eh, you don't use it. I think that Ecuador is because of the equator. That's why you can use it like that, and you can use it like that. It's not the same. But she, what some, some she just said makes sense, though, because you can say, Yo soy de, de los Estados Unidos. You put the los because it's, yeah, it's, it's los, los Estados. But you are talking about a bunch. You are talking about a whole well. country. You know, but like you say, the islands, the Caribbean, you say, las islas. Mm -hmm. 
Pero yo es de, pertenezco, es yo soy de las islas del Caribe. But, we, but if you say yo soy del Caribe o de, no, yo del, soy del Caribe. Del Caribe. Uh -huh. De el Caribe. Uh -huh. It might be similar to the way we use it. Okay. It's the D. De el Caribe, but the contraction is del Caribe. Because the example that she made is the same in Spanish. Okay. It's the same. It's the same. And probably in here is because the equator. But we can, you, you can say, yo soy de Ecuador. And it sounds per perfectly the same. Or if you say, yo soy de Ecuador, it sounds the same. Okay. And I think that it's because of the, the equator, the line of the equator. I think, I think that it's because That's of that. That's what Ecuador is, is on the equator. Uh-huh. Okay. Any other questions? Number three, Sarah. Ser is used to express occupation. Uh, ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? What do you do? Soy carpintero. I'm carpenter. Uh -huh. When we're using um, ser, ser, number three, occupation, occupación. When you are talking about what, are, what is your occupation. Like for example, ¿cuál es tu trabajo? ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? Okay? Because we're talking about the, the trabajo. ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? Soy carpintero. You are using the verb sir. Okay? Questions until here? I got a lot of work on this. I'm thinking about when to use qual and when to use que. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? ¿Qué es tu nombre? Uh, no. That's a good question. No. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? That's the right one. Yeah, he's saying though that's que another. Is to is to address other things. ¿Qué estás haciendo? ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Mm. And I have that, I, I was thinking to give you that, uh, ¿qué, cuál, co, when, when we use ¿Cómo? it? ¿Cómo? Okay. ¿Qué, cuál, cómo? Because if cuál. you're asking, if I said, what is this, I would say, ¿cuál es eso? Correct. No. no? ¿Qué es K, eso? It would be K, it's not cuál? No. Okay. Cuál is like a, that you are uh, asking for which one? Like, which one? Uh, okay. Like, ¿cuál es tu? Which number is yours? Which, which number, number is you? ¿Cuál nombre es which? el tuyo? ¿Cuál, cu cuál, ¿Cuál es carro tu es suyo? ¿Cuál carro es tuyo? Tell me, ¿cuál carro es tuyo? It's like, which one is, is yours? You are asking for, which one of these are yours? But what? yet she would say, ¿qué carro estás hablando? ¿O qué, car qué carro estás? Sí. Is that, instead of saying, ¿cuál carro estás hablando? Or no. Because when, when you ask, ¿cuál de estos es tu carro? Is which one of these are your, is your car? Yeah. But when you're talking, ¿qué, qué, de, qué, ¿de qué carro estás hablando? It's, it's another thing. Because, for example, I'm talking about my car. And you don't know which car is my car. And you say, ¿de qué carro hablas? Because you're talking about one specific one. One specific one. As, a base, as, as, as opposed to saying, out of all of those. Mm -hmm. When you are in the, the, whole, all, the whole scenario, mm -hmm. you're asking, which one of those belongs to you? ¿Cuál carro es suyo? ¿Cuál carro es el tuyo? Very helpful. Okay? So that's why, it's ¿cuál es tu trabajo? From all the variety of works, of, of jobs, which one is the one that you're doing? ¿Cuál es tu trabajo? Soy carpintero. Okay? So you, we're using occupation. Which one was the first one? When we use a set and start. For day, hour, and date. The number two was to express the place of origin. De dónde venimos. Tres, la ocupación. 
occupation for? For ser is used to express nationality. Es ella Puerto Rican? Is she Puerto Rican? No, es Guatemalteca. 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 So, to express nationality. So this means that you always have to use ser if you want to talk something like that, okay? Es ella, es ella de Estados Unidos? I'm asking, es ella de Estados Unidos? Sí. Sí, <laughs> ella, sí, ella es de Estados Unidos. Sí, you are using birth, the, the sir. Okay, Juanito, porque te veo. Yo, yo estoy preguntándome acerca de cuál y qué, yo estoy pensando, ¿de qué país eres? ¿De cuál país vienes? That's perfectly correct. Uh -huh. Creo que sí, entiendo. Entre estos es cuál. Uh -huh. In, in, of these is the cuál, if you're asking about the specific. So, ¿qué, what, what country are you from? ¿Qué país eres? You're, at, you're, you're asking for a particular one. But if you say, de cual país vienes, what country did you come from, it's out of all of those others. I think I got it. Can you repeat that for me? De, de que país eres, what country are you from? Mm -hmm. What specific country? What specific country? And then you can say, de, um, cual, de, cual, um, de cual país vienes, from all of those countries down there, which one's yours? Uh-huh. That's perfectly correct. Perfectly correct. And remember mm -hmm. that this verb, sir, es esencia. And if you see day, time, um, um, it's never going to change. It's the day. It's always going to be the day. It's always going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It, it, we're never going to change the date. It's always going to be June, July, you know. Those things never going to change. The hour never going to change. Uh, the essence of the hour never going to change. Okay, the place, the place of origin, like this, the number two. If you be, if you come from, if I come from uh, Ecuador, that never going to change because I born in that place. The occupation, for example. If you study, if you went to the school, and you went to the college, and you have a degree in, you name it, architect, you're always going to be an architect, because that's, that's you. It's never going to change. Nobody's going to take you out that, because you went to school and you got that. Occupation. Nationality. Your nationality is the same. You always gonna come from Estados Unidos, even though that he speaks Spanish. He always everybody that watch him say they know that he belongs to this place. It's it's true. I'm just giving you some clues, you know, some little things that makes you think. Say. Is always for the essencia, things that the essence that never gonna change. And a start is a condition that probably right now and in the supermarket and probably later and um, in the park. It changes, it can change. Okay? So, did you understand? Mm -hmm. Five, Sarah. There is used to express religious or political affili affiliation. <coughs> Son los uh, García Bautistas? Uh, are the Garcias Baptist? No son... Ca how do you say Catholic? How do you say Catholicos. Catholicos. No, they're Catholic. Es el... Es el gobierno... Socialista. Socialista. So you said this is this is Sarah? 
Uh -huh. Wow, that one's really interesting because that changes so rapidly. Well, we change it. You know, we change it. But when you when you have a strong belief, you know, it's supposed to be like that. You know, if you believe in Christ, if, and you definitely believe in Christ, nobody's going to change you that. You know, no matter if somebody come here and, and try to sell you, you know, other things. You know, if you believe in Him, you know to in whom you believe. No matter but what. But that happens. also goes to the essence of why people that are sent or come from Spanish-speaking countries are Catholic. I mean, that's the es essence of who they are. It's not Soy even. Catholic. That's not even matter if they what church they go to, but they are Catholic, and they struggle with that when they come to know Christ because they can't understand how their Sarah can change. Okay, I'm just giving you the, the, the it's giving you the, the clues when to use ser and in the correct uh, conjugation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ser is used to express the material something is made of. Um, de que material es la mesa. Was the table made of? Is de madera. It's made of wood. Okay. De qué material es la mesa? De qué material es la mesa? This one. What is uh, it? It's de plástico. Yeah. <laughs> Is it plastic? It's gonna change, and it's all, always gonna be plastic. See? That's why this is really important because when you figure it out, that it's gonna be easy for you to when to use there and when to use star. Okay? So, de qué material es la mesa? Es de madera. Es de plástico. Okay? Seven. Ser is used to express possession. De quien es la pluma? Whose pen is it? Es de Emilio. It's Emilio's. To express possession. Possession. Pluma. Do you know what pluma means? Pen. De quien es la pluma? Es de Emilio. ¿De quién es este libro? Es de Emilio. So, um, when you say de quién, is that basically saying of to who? whom? Of who or to whom? whom. To okay. whom? So, what is who? He's the same. Yeah. But whom is addressing exactly a quien. I didn't understand what is whom means the difference between whom and who. But for me, it's the same in Spanish. Okay. So, quien. Mm -hmm. It's quien. Okay. Is quien. Okay. Okay. Personal expressions. 
es importante practicar cada día. It's important to practice every day. Es necesario hablar mucho. It's necessary to speak a lot. <laughs> Expressions. And number 10. Ser is used to tell where an event is taking place. La película. La película. La película. Es en el cine. The movie is at the theater. La fiesta es en el club fantástico. The party is in the fantastic club. <laughs> <laughs> So, is to is if we use her when in a, where they where I would want to tell where an event is taking place, donde el, el evento va a tomar va a hacerse va a realizarse. Eleven. There is used with adjectives to express inherent or essential qualities. Miguel es un hombre sincero. Mike is a sincere man. So to express what? To express is after an adjective to express an essential quality. Okay? And you say también es guapo, he is also handsome. See? Not just today. <laughs> it's always. <laughs> See? That it's never gonna change. That is that's the most that, that is that is important. So let's review is telling you all the eleven things that for you to remember. When we use ser and star, okay. Any questions? Ser. When to use ser? Questions. Not at all. So we can keep. Cindy, when to use a star? When to use a star? One. A star is used to express geographic or physical locations. Donde estás? Where are you? Estoy en el laboratorio. I'm in the laboratory. Donde está Chile? Where's Chile? Chile está in America del Sur. Chile is in South America. Note, the one exception to this rule is that SER is used to tell where an event is taking place. La fiesta es in mi casa. See the difference? Geographical thing. Geografía. Donde estás? Estoy en el supermercado. I'm at the supermarket, right? ¿Dónde eres tú? No. Mm -mm -mm. That's wrong. I heard a lot. ¿Dónde eres tú? No. ¿Dónde estás tú? We are using this size now. We have been using this one. Now we're going to use this one. ¿Dónde estás tú? Estoy en el supermercado. Estoy en el supermercado. Okay? Two. Two. A star is used with adjectives to express a state or condition, how something is. ¿Cómo está la sopa? How's the soup? La sopa está fría. The soup is cold. ¿Cómo estás tú? How are you? Estoy muy bien, gracias. I'm very well, thanks. So, wait, next time that you ask a person how, how they are, how are you going to ask? Como tú estás. Como tú estás. Como tú ser. I heard a lot. And I, I know the condition. Mm -hmm. And what is a star? Because right now probably you don't feel good, but probably after two hours you're going to feel better. Probably right now, I'm hungry. But after you eat, you're full, so you're better. Right? It change. It, it change. That's why we use the star. Okay? In general, would it be best to say, como esta? Because that's usted, right? Como esta usted? Como esta usted? Mm -hmm. Because if I said to somebody, como estas, I'm treating them like two, which might be disrespectful. Correct? It depends to whom you are speaking. You know, okay. because probably they, it's, not, it's, not, 
it's not unrespectful. For me right now, it's not respectful, but probably for people older than me, and uh, they are coming from my country or different countries, and you treat like that, it's, mm, it's, mm, that is not good. But probably here, you know, they're not gonna treat, you know, they're not gonna think that you're treating them unrespectful. Okay. I don't think so. But for example, in the, one of the examples say, la sopa está fría. Right now, it's cold, the soup. But if you warm it, it changed. Mm -hmm. And it probably was hot earlier. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. Estuvo caliente. That's the past. But it's the same bird, but it's in the past. Never gonna change. The bird. The bird is gonna be the same, a star. But this is the present tense. But because they, they like you said, but probably the soup was hot earlier. La sopa estuvo caliente. Ahora, now, But I, I never I never change the, 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 the bird. It's the same. See? This is the past, this is the present. Sara is looking at me like oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> but we're not talking about anything about past tense. I'm just giving you an example that it's gonna, never gonna change. It's, it's always the same. Okay? Three. Three. A star is used with many, many idiomatic expressions. These are just a few. Estar de acuerdo. To be in agreement. Estar de pie. De pie. Pie. Estar de pie. Estar de pie. To be standing. Mm -hmm. Estar en camino. To be on the way. Estar en las nubes. To daydream. Like for example, Sarah, this morning she she saw, she said, "I'm on my way there, right? Estoy en camino a la clase. Estoy en camino a la clase. See? Two expressions. We use start." Okay, questions. Juanito está. Okay, four. Estoy repensando todas las cosas que ha escuchado para entiendo, entiendo por, el por qué. Number four. So far, and mm -hmm. I could be proven wrong in the next page, but so far it seems like all of these ways that you use a star are things that are temporary. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as long as it's as long as you can keep that in mind, yeah. it'll help you figure out which one to use. Okay. It, that's why it's a condition, right? But it's gonna change. Like mm -hmm. they remember the apple, mm -hmm. the, the green apple. Mm -hmm. The apple is green. Mm -hmm. But it's green because it was ripe. But it's going to change. If you give some days, it's going to change and you can eat it. Yeah. See? And I might be agreeing with you right now, but I might not agree with you in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, four? Yes. A star is used with the progressive tenses. You will learn more about this usage later. We present it now simply because it is an important use of the verb a star. ¿Qué estás comiendo? What are you eating? Estoy comiendo arroz y frijoles. I'm eating rice and beans. It's, a, it's like a, the progressive tense that we're going to check the next level. Okay? But so far to review when we're using, there is the next is when we use a star. See that it's just four. In cell we have eleven. So we, there are things that we need to remember, and because of the time, I'm going to give you 
exercise for you to do at home. But any questions so far? No, everything was clear. If you have questions when you are doing the exercise, the, the homework, just bring it because next week, uh, Jen, no, next week we don't have class because of Memorial Day. But June first, we're gonna have class. That is the final class here, and Jenny, uh, John, uh, wife is gonna give the class because I'm not gonna be here, but she is capable more than me. And she's gonna she have a lot of knowledge in this and she is gonna help you with this okay any questions you can ask for to her she's really good at this okay that is gonna be your homework I told you last week to do um, um, I told you to do uh, to to do a paragraph, right? Yes, I halfway did it. I'm not finished. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because I, I I told you to do the paragraph. Bring it on the the week of June first, okay. and that class, and give it to Jenny, and um, she's gonna review the paragraph. Here with you guys, some of you okay. uh, of the paragraph. So if any questions, she's gonna make the corrections. I know that she's good in that. She has been doing to him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so just just try to do it. And if you can implement or use what are you learning today, will be wonderful. Okay.